our youth in today's climate are very hyper aware that the way things are now doesn't have to be and won't be the way that it always is moving forward. They really are waking up to their power. It has to start in that dream space. It has to start in that imaginative space. So could you explain to us what you mean when you say Radical Freedom Dream? How did this come about? Radical Freedom Dream is the idea of responding to what you see in front of you by imagining what you wish was in front of you. Or imagining the world you want to live in. It came as a response to um, what was happening in, in, in the streets um, after the murder of George Floyd. We wanted to create a type of exercise at Studio B with the youth that we work with and challenge them to imagine the world that they want to create. What we're fighting against oftentimes is the result of someone else's imagination. We're working to dismantle structures that were created by someone's imagination 500 years ago. Um, and albeit we can call it a wicked imagination, but this imagination was so strong that here we are 500, 400 years later still trying to um, navigate our way out of it. What's going to replace that is going to have to be a radical imagination that replaces that um, wicked imagination. To enter into this space, you have to walk into this child's room and enter into the closet and then go through this transition um, into their dream. In this radical freedom dream, in this world that we've created, there are no police that exist, there are only people. It's an acronym for Policy Engagement Organization, Pursuing Love Everywhere. And these people behind me, they are reimaginations of how we see police uniforms today. Kind of like your neighborhood friendly guy and his suit, also void of any weapons or harmful materials. He has tools in his pocket that are meant to resonate with community members and be filled with things they might actually need, such as time, patience, love, forgiveness, humor. I'm actually the daughter of a police officer, and I thought that it was really interesting when we were doing these workshops how whenever we prompted the youth to think of their safe space and to think of a world that is most safe for them, no one in that prompt would respond with police, understandably. I overstand, you know, the tension and the resentment that community members have toward police. I really think that young people have a much wider grasp of what healthy um, relationships with authority can look like, even if that means no authority at all. There was a young man who drew a gun with a flower coming out, with flowers coming out of it. The gun shoots flower and the flowers were so beautiful that it stopped you in your tracks. So replacing this violent instrument with something of beauty. And inside the gun, there's this tribute to all those who um, fell victim to police violence. The question was posed, what could you create to make the world a better place? And the thought was, they would create these empathy glasses. And these glasses were um, designed where you put them on and you could instantly see people clearly. You could understand their hopes, their dreams, their fears. If we, these glasses existed, there wouldn't be any violence. So there wouldn't be any police violence. There wouldn't be any misunderstandings. Because you could see someone and understand, oh, they're having a bad day, or oh, they're afraid right now, or oh, they just got a text message that frustrated them. That's why they appear to be angry. What's triggering these actions to stand on all toes? Light Mad tick that sky like light 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 in the atmosphere. As my left eye light partner, cloudy is riskless. 
Just watch how it shines so bright in the dark. A light stick is the opposite of night stick wizards, which is a weapon. So I turned a weapon into a positive tool. So it's like, it's supposed to enlighten. The piece itself is like representing like black power or the ancestor fist. The child mind can express so much more than what an adult trying to limit the child mind to. To me, I think we should let the youth express themselves more, but guide them from a distance. The way things are is not the way things have to be. Using our creativity and our imagination as a launch pad to helping us mobilize in the direction that we want to go. We have to be able to visualize where we're going. What is the world that I want to live in, that I want my children's children to live in? It's so important for us to just use our radical imagination and to chart a course for where we feel we all should be.